Regression in Excel. Linear regression is a very popular statistical tool for exploring the relationship between two variables that have numeric values. Examples might be sales of chocolate and daily temperature, sales of ice cream and daily temperature, distance from university and amount of time spent online. There are two steps to regression. First, we fit a line and see what it tells us about the sample data. You can learn about this in the video Scatter Plots in Excel. Then we use inference to draw conclusions about the population based on the sample results. The basic idea behind all inference is explained in the video Understanding the p-value. Here is an example. Helen sells chocolatees. Helen thinks she sells more chocolatees on cold days. She has collected temperature and sales data for 30 weekdays and wishes to find out what she can say about the relationship for all days. Using the equation, can she predict the sales for a day at a given temperature? She fits a line and finds that the equation for it is y equals negative 2.4x plus 112.2. Now she wishes us to find out what conclusions she can draw for the population. In particular, is there really a relationship between the temperature and the sales for all days, or could this effect be due to natural variation and sampling variation or sampling error? To do this analysis in Excel, you will need the Data Analysis Tool Pack. If you do not have it, you will need to add it before continuing. On the Data tab, there is Analysis Group. Select Data Analysis Tools. Select Regression, OK. Enter the Y range and the X range. Note that these are in the opposite order from how you would have your data to get the scatter plot. The Y range is the sales, and X range is the temperature. The Y range is the vertical axis or dependent variable. The X range is the horizontal axis or independent variable. When you highlight the data, do include the labels, temperature and packets at the top. It helps in interpretation. In the dialog box, click on Labels to say that the top row of data contains the labels. Then select where you would like the top left hand corner of the output range to be. A good place is just under the graph. Click OK. The output has three parts to it. We will start with the bottom table. You can see that the coefficients are given as 112.2 for the intercept and negative 2.4 for the temperature. This means that we will write the equation as negative 2.4 times temperature plus 112.2, or the other way around. This must be the same as what we got from fitting a trend line on the graph of the data. The slope value, negative 2.4, tells us that for each extra degree of temperature, the daily sales decrease by 2.4 packets of chocolatees on average. This equation applies to the sample of 30 days that Helen took, but she wants to know if the data provides evidence that there really is a relationship in the population, that is for all days, between temperature and sales. The p-value for temperature is 0.025537. We will use the significance level of 0 0.05. This p-value is lower than the significance level, so we reject the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis is that the slope coefficient is zero. p is low, null must go, so we reject the null hypothesis. We do have evidence that the slope is different from zero in the population. We can tell Helen that this supports her theory that she sells more packets on cold days. Next we look at the confidence interval. The 95% confidence interval for the coefficient of temperature is given as negative 4.46 to negative 0.31. We are 95% confident that the slope of the line for all days lies between negative 4.46 and negative 0.31. The only other figure we will use from this output is the R squared value of 0.16579 or 0.17, the same value we got from fitting the line graph. This tells us that temperature explains 17% of the variation in number of packets sold. We conclude that as the temperature gets colder, Helen does sell about two packets more for each degree of temperature. Here is another example explained briefly. Helen's brother Luke sells choco ices. They are particularly delicious and refreshing on hot days. Helen and Luke suspect that the sales of choco ices increase as the temperature increases. They ask us to analyse the relationship between the temperatures for the 30 days and the sales of choco ices. 
the dependent variable is sales, the graph shows a positive slope as expected. From the printout, we get the equation sale of ices equals 25.1 plus 8.5 temperature. We are 95% confident that the increase in sales for each extra degree of temperature is between 4 and 13 packets. The p-value for the slope is 0 0.00067, which tells us that we have strong evidence that the slope is not zero in the population. Be careful, it does not tell us that there is a strong relationship, but rather that there is strong evidence for the existence of a relationship, or a non-zero slope. The R-squared value of 0.34 indicates that 34%, or about a third of the variation in sales of choco ices, is explained by temperature. We can conclude that more choco ices are sold on hot days. Finally, here's an example where the p-value is not low. We have data for 100 students on how far they live from the university and how many hours a week they spend online. The equation is that hours online equals 11.9 minus 0.1 times kilometres. The p-value of 0.2 is not less than 0.05, it is not low. We do not reject the null hypothesis. We do not have evidence that there is a relationship in the population between distance from university and hours spent online. And that is that.